start with you. Um, I don't want to replay the threats. We've played them before in this program, the voicemails threatening your life and the life of your family, and I think some of your staffers, um, but they're real, and they change the way you go about your life. And more tragically, and I think this was the impact of Paul Pelosi's attack on anyone in the public arena, they change your family's life forever. They rob them of their privacy, of their ability to feel anonymous anywhere they go, and of their sense of security. Well, thank you, Nicole. Uh, MAGA extremism, it's so bankrupt of any ideas uh, that it really relies on violence and threats and, and ultimately chaos, you know, to tear apart our communities. And, and yes, uh, too often the victims are family and staff who are often in fixed positions while uh, the target of the threats are, is often on the move. And, and that's what's so disturbing. There has to be accountability. But too often, you know, because it's very difficult to prosecute uh, these threats or get the police to bring cases forward. I have to just repost the threats online and, and have found out that the individuals have been fired or have lost their jobs or ultimately they take down their accounts because of the shame. Uh, but you have to push back. Uh, that's the only language you know many of these bullies understand. But there has to be legal accountability. And I'm actually working uh, on the Judiciary Committee uh, to reshape uh, the criminal threats language uh, that prosecutors can use, uh, of course, to make sure we respect freedom of speech, uh, but to make sure that you can't just use violence as a way to in intimidate uh, public officials. And, and that, again, is the aim of MAGA extremism.